Patrick Gill with Rambus. I'm an optics researcher with Rambus and I'm showing off our lensless smart sensor technology. Here I have a standard photodiode array where we've replaced the cover glass with a tiny diffractive optic. A diffractive optic that's only 55 microns in diameter, a little bit smaller than a typical human hair. And it doesn't produce a focused image. Instead, it produces something we're calling a blob that a computer algorithm can interpret and then reconstruct. There are a couple of demos that I'd like to show you. One of them is going to be white light imaging, which is going to produce low resolution, low signal to noise ratio, but very high field of view images of the world around, which might be useful for things like building monitoring or just getting a sense for what's happening in the world using a tiny package. So on the left here in this computer display, we have the blob, the raw sensor readings underneath this tiny diffraction gradient. On the right over here, we have the computed reconstruction of what the blob means, what the picture is just based on the blob of the world around. And as you can see, if I put my hand over here, you can see that the signals, uh, the hand is easily recognized over here uh, in the reconstruction. There are other things. Well, can you do that again? So sure. you get closer, like. Yes. And, nice, and then the blob looks like. Okay. Next, I'm going to demonstrate the field of view of this optical system. So, here I have a point source of light, and if I hold it directly in line with the sensor array, then there's no light shining on the surface of this flat sensor. Uh, so it doesn't detect anything. But if I move it off the normal, even a little bit, at this angle, you can see that it's already de detected that there's light at that angle. And as I move it towards the center, you can get a sense for what's happening with the optics. So you see that the raw sensor readings corresponding to a point source don't look like a point at all. Instead, they look like a spiral. They have a lot of texture to them. Uh, that can be computationally undone here, or we can take advantage of the fact that this spiral has so much texture to do some optical sensing tasks to much higher fidelity than you would be able to do with a focusing camera. And for my next demo, I'm going to show you exactly that. So I'm going to take this uh, red pass filter and then I'm going to screw it onto the top of this sensor. And then I'm going to take the output of two lenses. Now I have a red LED and a, an optical filter which lets red light through to the lensless smart sensor. I also, on the same photodiode array, have two lensless smart sensors that are spaced by 1.86 millimeters, extremely close together, which is something that's trivially easy using this type of manufacturing process, because it's all planar and we're using standard CMOS manufacturing. Here you have the outputs from the left sensor and here from the right, and by aligning these two spirals together, you can compute the range, which is shown here, to this light source. And as I move it back and forth, you can see that the range changes. What's remarkable about this system is because the point spread function has so much texture to it, and it's so easy to align two spirals together, much easier than to align two points together, you get much higher accuracy in your range finding for a given baseline than you would for a focusing camera. In fact, if your human eyes had the same kind of accuracy, you would be able to have accurate depth perception even of objects that are approximately 15 meters away. The, we get high accuracy depth perception out to a range of approximately 300 times baseline, which as far as we know, might be some of the best in class. So we have the same optical system that was producing low fidelity images and yet it can do a high fidelity measurement because of some of the specifics of the optics involved. For my next demonstration, I'm going to show you how with the same red filter, but with a different light source and different algorithms, we are able to do sophisticated gesture sensing tasks. Many smartphones contain an active LED 
system coupled with a tiny sensor that usually detects just up, down, left, right type imaging to be able to answer a phone call or swipe a page or something like that. Now, in a form factor that's even smaller than the light sensitive part of this kind of uh, sensing system and using an LED that's sim uh, similar to those, this is the kind of performance that's available. So you can see here, the blob once again has unrecognizable images and over here you can see the image of my hand quite well. You can tell how many fingers I'm holding up, you can sense even subtle motion. There are many functions that are possible with this type of sensor in the same form factor as a quad sensor. Uh, so we think that this type, of, uh, this type of sensor would enable many more applications than are available in the, the form factor that is required for modern mobiles. And, I mean, you mentioned that the power requirements of this are infinitesimally small, so it, it's the, but in this use case, it can be integrated into the product with basically zero impact to the device's power usage. Yes, that's our aim, and um, I, I suppose we would, uh, we'd like to do a more sophisticated study to figure out exactly what the power usage would be, whether it really uh, does hide in the noise of the power consumption of a smartphone, but so far that's our belief. We're able to uh, do such low power sensing because we require so few pixels. The entire scale of the optical system is small, and the power consumption of an imager scales with the number of pixels. So if you make a large focusing system with a lens and many pixels underneath, you consume a lot more power than you do with something like this, where you have a, a great signal, a usable signal with capturing all the information that you need using a fewer number of pixels. And you mentioned you, you're working with some partners and obviously Internet of Things and other applications is where you see this being used for. Can you just give our, our, our viewers just a sort of big picture uh, idea of some applications you could foresee this being used in? So some of the applications we see being, it being used in first involve point tracking. And there are a lot of applications such as virtual reality headsets that involve point tracking and eye tracking as well. Both of those would benefit immensely from having the small size of this type of sensor. And given that we can have better acuity than a focusing camera of the same size, we think that our value proposition there is especially strong. And, uh, and then you mentioned gestures, but then in, there's also the talk about IoT out in smart cities and uh, in vehicles and so you know can you give some examples of where you might see it used in those situations as well? So for vehicles one of the point tracking applications that works particularly well with these optics is finding the location of headlights. For instance if you're driving down a dark night and the car in the opposing traffic has their high beams on but they have a smart sensor that's able to locate your headlights in three-dimensional space, they can dim the headlights, it, or perhaps even the portion of the headlights that are shining into your eyes, and um, therefore you wouldn't have to have manual intervention to dim the headlights and then bring them back up, dim the high beams and then bring them back up. That's one automotive application. You asked about some smart city applications as well. If you have smart sensors that are able to see whether there are people waiting at a bus stop, or whether there's somebody whose path needs to be illuminated along a, a dark night, things like this, then you can save power in the case of the lighting. You can perhaps have adaptive systems for during the uh, for the bus stop application, where you send an extra bus if there are, happen to be a lot of people trying to get, for instance, to Mobile World Congress uh, all at, on time. Um, and you can do this all without taking pictures of people. You don't need to have focusing cameras, which potentially have the uh, have privacy yeah, issues. Yeah, there's people who, there's that paranoia, big brother, you know, are there going to be so many cameras in the world that my, you know, life has no privacy whatsoever, right? That's right. So. And what's nice about lensless smart sensing technology is that it provides enough visual acuity to perform certain tasks extremely well without having to capture the kind of image that would be able to read text or identify people by their, their faces. 
it, it gives you another option so that people can have their function but not have their privacy invaded to the same degree. So obviously this is still, uh, you know, something you're working with partners on implementing. So how long before you might see uh, some products using your technology? Well, um, we're, we're uh, not disclosing anything right yeah. now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Also, I should tell you that this technology that I demonstrated today, uh, we got back from the labs, I suppose, this specific thing six weeks ago. And so there's been a lot of active development recently, and we haven't demonstrated any of these sophisticated functions to anybody yet. This is the very first time, the very first day that we've made a public demonstration of, of this technology. So um, there had already been a considerable amount of interest using our older generation technologies which required more computation and uh, didn't have all, all the nice point tracking properties of this new technology. We hope that with this iteration we might uh, see even be extended more robust uh, technology adoption from, uh, from our partners. Well, thanks very much for talking to us. Certainly uh, very interesting technology and for people who are familiar with your name, brand name, uh, a far cry from what I think a lot of people recognize Rambus as doing and uh, very exciting, especially from VR, from my perspective, wearable devices, I can see a lot of great applications for this. Yes. So thanks for talking to us. Thank you, Alex.